Hepatitis C and HIV co-infection, Wikipedia Audio In HIV HCV co-infected patients, the hepatitis C viral load is higher than in HCV mono-infected patients in both the plasma and liver tissue. Patients who are HIV positive are commonly co-infected with HCV due to shared routes of transmission, percutaneous exposure to blood, sexual intercourse, and from a mother to her infant. Infection with HCV can be asymptomatic, self-limiting, or progress to cirrhosis or cancer. The morbidity and mortality caused by HCV has increased since the inception of highly active antiretroviral therapy because HIV patients are living longer from potent antiretroviral therapies and prophylaxis of traditional opportunistic infections. The effect of HCV on the natural history of HIV remains inconclusive due to contradictory studies documenting no effect, while others show an increase to an AIDS-defining illness or death. In the United States, approximately 150,000 to 300,000 people are CO-infected with HIV and HCV. This represents 15% to 30% of all HIV-infected patients and 5% to 10% of all HCV patients. Reduced HCV antibody production, drug interactions, other causes of liver disease, differing epidemiologic characteristics and natural history complicate the management of HCV-HIV patients. Until recently there was little data published regarding treating HIV HCV CO infected patients, fortunately recent trials have been published about the safety and efficacy of current treatment options. The primary objective of HCV therapy is permanent eradication of the virus. The secondary potential benefit of eradication is a reduction in the risk of liver failure and liver cancer. Currently, PEG interferon alpha 2 a plus ribavirin is the only FDA-approved treatment for HIV HCV CO infected patients. Interferons bind to specific cell surface receptors of virus infected cells, which induces a complex cascade of protein-protein interactions and a rapid activation of gene transcription. The antiviral effects of interferons are mediated through inhibition of viral penetration or uncoating, inhibiting viral replication or translation of viral proteins, and slash or viral assembly and release. The difference between PEG interferon and interferon is the addition of a polyethylene glycol polymer. The addition of PEG decreases plasma clearance considerably protects the molecule from proteolytic degradation and reduces its immunogenicity. Peak concentrations are approximately 1.5 to 2-fold higher than trough concentrations and the half-life is 80 hours. Ribavirin is a synthetic nucleoside analog, but its mechanism of action is not clearly established. Ribavirin inhibits the replication of a wide range of RNA and DNA viruses. Pharmacokinetics are similar in patients with HIV CO infection compared with HCV mono infection. Characteristics This was a randomized, phase 3, open label, parallel group study. 416 treatment naive patients were assigned to 1.5 G-KG PEG interferon alpha 2 B once weekly plus ribavirin 800 mg daily or 3 million units of standard interferon alpha 2 A plus ribavirin 800 mg daily for 48 weeks. Six patients were evaluated at weeks 2 and 4 then every four weeks after treatment and then at weeks 4, 12, and 24 post-treatment until week 72 was reached. The primary endpoint was a sustained viral response, defined as undetectable serum HCV RNA at week 72. The secondary endpoint was histological improvement. In the standard interferon group, 
20% of the 207 patients obtained an SVR, and in the PEG interferon group 27% of the 205 patients obtained an SVR. At week 24, undectable HCV RNA levels were achieved in 28% and 40% of patients, respectively, respectively. At 48 weeks, the end of treatment virologic responses were 21% and 35% of their respective groups. In patients who had genotype 1 or 4, PEG interferon achieved a higher rate of SVR than interferon P equals 0.006. However, in genotypes 2, 3, or 5, the rates of SVR were similar. The withdrawal and adverse event rates were similar. In the study by Chung, ETAL 66 treatment naive patients received 180 G weekly of PEG interferon or 6 million units thrice weekly of interferon for 12 weeks and then switched to 3 million units thrice weekly for 48 weeks. Both groups received rebavirin. The main endpoint was to detect the differences in virologic response rates between the two groups. At week 24, Subjects who did not have a virologic response underwent a liver biopsy and treatment was continued in patients who showed a histological improvement. In the first trial, approximately the same number of patients from each group withdrew due to laboratory abnormalities or adverse events. The doses were modified more frequently in the PEG interferon group due to lab abnormalities or adverse events. Neutropenia and weight loss were significantly higher in the PEG interferon group, whereas, insomnia was higher in the interferon group. In the second study, 12% in each group withdrew due to lab abnormalities or adverse events. Both groups experienced similar number of episodes of neutropenia but two subjects in the PEG interferon group dropped out due to grade 4 neutropenia. The other patients were managed by dose reduction. One case of clinically significant pancreatitis occurred in a patient who was receiving didanosine. In the last study, about the same number of patients dropped out of the study due to lab abnormalities, but the patients who dropped out from adverse reactions varied. Overall, most patients withdrew from the interferon plus rebavirin arm and the least from the PEG interferon plus rebavirin arm. The major difference was that there was a higher incidence of neutropenia in the PEG interferon groups. In the trials described above, the only common predictor of SVR among all three was the treatment of HCV other than type 1.6 to 8 in the trial by Chung ETAL. Patient characteristics that predicted an SVR were treatment with PEG interferon and rebavirin, absence of prior drug abuse, a detectable level of HIV-1 RNA, and a Karnofsky score of 100. The Karnofsky score is a subjective measure of how well the patient is doing. A score of 100 indicates that the patient has no complaints or evidence of disease. A score of 50 indicates that the patient requires considerable assistance and frequent medical care, and a score of 0 indicates that the patient is dead. In the study by Karat ETAL, no protease inhibitor therapy, an age of 40 years or younger, or a baseline alanine aminotransferase greater than three times the upper limit of normal predicted a sustained virological response. In the study by Torani ETAL, SVR was predicted by HCV genotype other than 1 and a baseline HCV RNA level of 800,000 IU or less per milliliter. In a study involving 21 HIV CO infected patients, pre treatment baseline plasma levels of IP10 predicted the reduction of HCV RNA during the first days of interferon slash rebavirin therapy for HCV genotypes 1 to 3, as is also the case in HCV mono infected patients. 
Pre-treatment IP10 levels below 150 pg ml are predictive of a favorable response, and may thus be useful in encouraging these otherwise difficult to treat patients to initiate therapy. Treatment Pegylated interferon alpha 2b plus ribavirin versus standard interferon alpha 2b plus ribavirin. Pegylated interferon alpha 2a plus ribavirin versus interferon alpha 2a plus ribavirin. Tolerability Predictors of an SVR. Notes